you guys! Welcome back to my plant experiment. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm going to be doing today is starting the process of turning this little Calathea Freddy into my very first hydro plant. So it's going to be interesting to see if he straight up dies. As it is, I have rescued this guy from very near death recently. I'll insert a photo of what he looked like before. He doesn't look amazing now, I'm aware of that, but he looked worse, okay? Uh, so what I have is a little jar doobie that I picked up from the reject shop. I think it was $1.50. He might outgrow this. I, well, I'm hoping he does. That would be amazing. But at the moment, I thought it was a pretty good size to get him started. So let's get to the first day's process of changing this guy into a hydro plant. So obviously the first step is to remove all of the soil from your plant and then you want to give the roots a thorough wash off using a hose or like a shower head kind of thing. Um, you want to try and remove as much of the soil as you can over the first little time period to try and make sure that you don't have uh, fungus or bacteria from the soil breeding in the water. So I sprayed mine off pretty roughly with the hose on this first day to try and get as much of the soil out of it as I could. Um, it was reasonably easy with this guy. I later bought a peace lily that I changed to hydro which was really difficult. It was in a chunky mix. So there we go, there's the Calathea with its root potatoes or hairy little balls, whatever you want to call them. And it was at this point that I sort of realized that my jar was smaller than expected. The plant actually has more roots than I thought it would, uh, just looking at the top of it, but I guess a bunch of leaves died, but the roots were still really healthy, which is a good sign for my plant. So the first night you just want to use some filtered water and just leave it in overnight. Uh, you don't want to fill the water all the way up. Make sure, particularly on Calatheas, it isn't sitting on the top part of the root system where it changes to stem. You want it only covering the roots or you will get rot. So after 24 hours of it soaking in the water, I took it out again and attempted to clean off any remaining dirt. Uh, on the internet it suggested using a toothbrush, but I found that that kind of just broke a lot of the finer roots off the Calathea roots, so I just used my hands and kind of tried to pick off any of the clumps of dirt that were still attached. You're going to need some sea salt to do this in exactly the same way that I did it. So it's just a seaweed treatment. You want to make it up to half strength of what the bottle says for watering plants in soil, just so you don't damage the root system because you've only got water and sea salt. You don't have the soil to act as a bit of a buffer. So you want to fill your plant up to the same level, so not above the roots, keep it below them. It doesn't matter if some of the roots are out of the water, they won't dry up and die. But if any of the stem is in the water, it will rot. So leave your plant in this for 24 hours again. So I followed some instructions that I found on a Facebook group. After the 24 hours of the sea sole, I tipped out the sea sole, rinsed the roots, rinsed the container, and put some fresh filtered water back in again. And then I changed this water 
once a day, every day for seven days. And then after that first week, it went to every second day for the next week. And then the next week was every third day. And then the next week was every fourth day and so on until you get to a weekly water change system. And then uh, once you're at that weekly water change, you would do another 24 hour sea soil soak. It's been about uh, seven weeks since I put my Calathea in hydro and it's doing really, really well. So you can see that it has two new leaf shoots coming off it, put it in front of my face. One on either side of the main stem there and there's a ton of new roots growing in the bottom there. All of the white stuff is, all of the white roots are new roots. So it's actually really, really happy and it's due to have an overnight sea salt bath tonight. My piece of is pretty happy in hydro too. So I've actually made the decision to do both of them in sea salt at the moment, even though my piece of is not at one week water changes yet. I'm just going to do a month of uh, overnight sea soil soaks and then put them back in clean water again the next day. So I'm going to go put them both in a half strength sea soil mix and I'll be back. So they're now in half strength sea soil solution and I'll leave them in that for 24 hours then take them out, rinse their roots off, rinse the container out and put some fresh water in for another week and then repeat it again in a week's time for a total of four weeks worth. And then we'll check back in again and see how they're going then. I just wanted to jump in and cover a few things I didn't cover very thoroughly in the video. So this is my peace lily that I started changing to hydro after the Calathea. And it changed to hydro really, really easily. It's happy as Larry in its little jar. Um, I don't have any rocks in the bottom of mine because I don't like the way rocks look. I like it just the way it is. But you can put rocks in the bottom and some people do to elevate the plant. Some people say that you need to have airflow around this base part of the plant. I haven't had too much trouble but I do rinse that off when I change the water. I haven't been changing the water in either of these weekly. I've been doing it maybe once every two to three weeks, occasionally weekly, maybe if you're lucky, because uh, I'm lazy. Now your Calathea is going to get these kind of edges on it a bit from fungus, so I do treat all of my Calatheas and prayer plants in general with an antifungal treatment roughly once a month to twice a month, depending on how lazy I am. Um, and it's basically just a foliar spray and then I will spray the roots of this guy and then rinse them off before I put them back in the water again. I haven't had too much in the way of root rot. It's all been perfectly fine. In the first couple weeks of changing both of these to water, I did get some root rot in both of them. Um, in terms of I think the soil roots were just passing away and they've been replaced by water roots now. Occasionally a root will fall off and I usually just give them a little bit of a, a run through with my fingers when I'm changing the water, rinse out the roots a bit just to make sure that if there's any that are a bit unhealthy they get pulled off but nothing major, they're growing pretty well. So I think we've finally reached the end point of turning these two plants into hydro plants. It's been about two months since I started on the Calathea and as you can see um, he's got a whole lot more growth than when I first popped him into water. Um, he's got two whole new leaf shoots here and here which have popped out two leaves each. Um, the piece of lily basically from the start was a okay. I think you could probably just stick a piece of lily in water and it'd be like, yeah, I love it. Um, the roots on the piece of lily are a little bit green. Uh, I understand that that's normal. It's just because they've been exposed to uh, more light and so they start to go green. 
a bit weird looking when you first see it but yeah I haven't had any problem with rotting off in either of them. The Calathea probably needs an antifungal treatment again soon because you just need to do that with them anyway. The root potatoes have not gone soft or rotten at all. It's grown a whole lot more roots on it since I put it in. Lots of white little roots growing there. And it's as happy as Larry so I'm calling this a success and that's probably the process I'm going to use for changing any plant to hydro if I want to in the future. And yeah, so see you guys next one.